Bonjour, mon ami, il est agent. And uh, whenever I heard about this news story, uh, I was in a bit of disbelief. Uh, I didn't know what to think, and even though after I did a little looking into it a little more, uh, my opinion right now has not changed from what it was when I first saw it. And that this is, this is a bad fucking idea. Now, before I start, first of all, I played shooters, was obsessed with shooters at one point, a long time ago, literally eons ago. But I'm not that crazy about them. But even if I was, even back then, I don't remember ever liking the idea of camping or dealing with campers. I fucking hate this shit. I think it's a, it's a very annoying strategy to play around. And, you know, uh, my opinion of people back then is that, you know, it's just, it sucks to have to deal with that. It, it is an annoying ass troll tactic, I guess you could say. However, after playing fighting games to the level that I do now, I'm by no means the greatest guy out there, but I can hold my own. Um, I've learned to deal with the fact that every game of any competitive nature has some cheapness factor to it. Shooters and fighters especially. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's RTSs or not, uh, there's some cheapness factor to it. And it's annoying, but you got one or two choices. Uh, you either play around it or play with it. For example, uh, I passively play uh, UMVC 3, Ultimate Marvel 3, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 for those that don't know. And uh, out of the team choices I use, one of them, I, I, I use Jill. And if you play MVC 2, you'll, you'd know that she's nowhere the same. She doesn't even play the same. She's actually a pretty technical, rushdown based character. But that's, once again, let me, let me get to the point. Uh, she's not often seen and doesn't have much great things going for her. Uh, I often refer to her as a rush job character. But then meanwhile, you got other characters like Dante, for example, a character that I fucking hate and as far as the, that game is concerned, because I mean, he just has so many natural advantages. I actually had the opportunity to take a little peek in the strategy guide and I was looking in the combo section, the chain style of his combos, and apparently when it comes to wall bounces and ground bounces, he can ignore some of those rules and then continue combos literally for like any hit. Continue or convert combos into any hit to be like anywhere in between 600 to Andrew K, which is like almost a full health character for those that once again don't know. Yeah, he's inherently strong. It's annoying to have to deal with. And as a result, I, I don't play him. However, I do also accept the fact that if I don't play him, I'm going to have to accept the fact that there are going to be other people that are going to play him a lot for many different reasons, which I'm not going to get into. And I, you have one or two choices. I could either play him myself or let the pride get the best of me and not play him. I let the pride get the best man, not play him. But you want to know why? Because when I did swallow my pride, I wasn't enjoying this. I wasn't having fun with the overall experience. So why should I play a character that I know is good that I'm also not having fun with? Fuck the win. If I'm not having fun, the win don't mean shit to me. And then that's how I feel about this. It's just not, you know what I'm saying? My Microsoft, a company that can't even get their lives straight, has tons of shit going on with them, is now dictating to us how they think we should play the game. And I actually felt this way about the Killer Instinct uh, game whenever they talked about implementing a, a uh, Rage Quitter Jail. Uh, I already thought it was a bad idea. And then what? Days later, there's already reports of the Jail Rage Quitter um, feature having problems and bugs. And I just laughed at myself. I'm like, <laughs> well, shitty game will always be a shitty game. But now, campers, really? So I guess snipers are fucked then. Uh, that was actually the position I played. I played sniper. Now, does that mean that you're going to camp? Not necessarily. At least not for me. Um, I'm one of those snipers that is, you know, due to my personality, uh, I'm pretty impatient. I don't like sitting in a place for a long extended period of time. I like getting to snipe people in mid-range or maybe possible CQC. 
Uh, I don't mind using the pistol. I'm an active sniper, is the point. I don't like sitting in one place. Even if I sit in one place and no one finds me, and no one else shows up, I will move. I, I don't like it. But this is also why I stopped fucking playing Call of Duty for a long period of time. Because Call of Duty 1 has not been a good game in eons. It's been a very long time since Call of Duty has actually been phenomenal or even impressive or innovative. And we can date that to what? The first Modern Warfare? You know how long ago the game came out? Yeah, ancient history. Um, the game has not changed. It's more of the developer's fault that these inherent problems, like the kill streaks and camping and glitching and all this other shit, that was in Modern Warfare 2 and 3. Two games that were literally almost a fucking reshell of the first one in terms of production and um, creativity. And Ghost, yeah, it may not be as bad as 3, but that's not saying much at all. It really isn't. And now Microsoft wants to ban them. My thing is, though, is it going to affect anybody's mindset? about what system they're going to buy for what game they want to play. Because thankfully, at least to Infinity Ward's benefit in Activision, the Call of Duty games are not exclusive to the Xbox One. Which, like I've stated in another video, there's no point to have that system or the PS4. Uh, at least not right now. There's, there are no real killer apps for them. All the big games are not exclusive to those systems. But now you have Microsoft's wanting to step in to try and, I guess, regulate things. And this is really just a PR move to make it seem like, oh, well, we're for the gamer and all that. And no, Microsoft, okay, you're, you're, you're just a big fucking corporation. You care about yourselves. You don't give a fuck about us. So I don't, this, this little cop out that you're trying to do, trying to, I guess, smooth out the rough waters you made for yourself. Uh, no, I don't fucking think so. I can see through that shit. And even then, I've already spent my money um, on what you're now telling me how to play. And I not only now have to deal with when I can play the fucking game with DRM, now I have to deal with how I want to play my game. Because, you know, fighting games are like that too. They have what is known as turtling, which is playing overly defensive. Or at least overly defensive by comparison to somebody who would not play as defensive. Whether they're more rushdown oriented or patient or, or etc. Um, yeah, it's pretty annoying to deal with somebody that's using guile, zoning your ass out against somebody who has no fireball or ways around fireballs. But I mean, it's part of the game, people. You either play it or stop fucking bitching and moaning and complaining. Uh, yeah, there are inherent weaknesses with, with characters and whatnot. But when it comes to shooters, the big thing that makes and breaks those shooters other than the game engine itself and system mechanics are the levels and call of duty is a damn corridor shooter corridor shooting basically means that you have all kinds of corners to hide around due to the buried design of the developers they made these levels this way this game is shaped not just by the players, but mostly the developers. The developers are going to be the reasons why campers are able to do this. And a lot of people even told me, they're like, yeah, these levels are kind of designed for campers. But this is also why people that play Call of Duty don't immediately like Battlefield, if not at all. Because those levels are pretty wide and expansive, and there's not a lot of places to hide. And then there's Bullet Drop. And then there's you don't have to worry about all these ridiculous ass perks and kill streaks. It's a bit more realistic. Call of Duty's not realistic at all. And then with you having to deal with spawn kills and then the camping, it really kills the experience. So I left the game alone and I said, fuck it, I'm not gonna continue to put up with I'm not with what I'm not enjoying. But now you're telling me that I can't fucking look 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 at it this way, okay. If they would do it right and they won't, but let's say, theoretically speaking, if they would do it right. Um, how are they going to do that? But more importantly, if they would do it right, wouldn't they have so much of a problem with it? I know one fighting game that actually penalizes you if you're overly defensive. It's called Guilty Gear. Um, 
the the feature is called negative penalty. And if you know anything about meters in the game, basically what it is is that if you stay overly defensive for too long, your meter will stay danger. And if you continue to be defensive for too long, you lose all of your meter. And in that game, meter is very important. You're using it for overdrives and, and then the EX-esque moves. Yeah, they, they don't like the de defense, overly defensive uh, aspects. I mean, you can kind of turtle with these characters, but without meter, you lose a lot of what each character is capable of. Um, for this game, I don't know if they would, how they would do it, if they're even referring to just Call of Duty, which um, the mo the main game I can think of, of people camping in is fucking Call of Duty or any type of corridor shoot. Excuse me, corridor of duty. Because until uh, they decide to no longer make it a fucking corridor based shooter, some boring ass predictable uh, rehash of what has already been done. In games like Unreal Tournament, although nowhere near as great as a fashion, um, Call of Duty is going to have these inherent problems, and you can make all these little quote-unquote uh, camper jails if you want to, but it's not going to affect the fact that this game is fucking dated and out of touch and not innovative and pretty much a generic staple of shooters. This is not a godfather of shooters. Like Street Fighter 2 would be a, like a godfather of fighting games. Sure, it had balance issues, but I mean, come on now. Microsoft, if you're going to do this, think very carefully about the results and do this shit right. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to play Guilty Gear the Excerpt Sign when it comes out. Um, you motherfuckers can play with yourselves all you want. Camping. To hours on end. Argent au revoir. Merci mon amis. To much of my delight.